And we are back! It's the G.I. Jobo Talking Joe Smash Up coming at you talking about catalogs. We're unbreaking, unbreaking? We're breaking down the 1991 Benelux catalog this evening. I'm in a very dimly lit room, but I'm not alone. I'm joined by my main partner in crime, Paul from G.I. Jobo. Hey, Paul. Hey, everybody. And those two handsome strangers at the bottom two boxes are none other than Ben Flying Retro. Hey, Ben. Come on! I'm pumped to be here today. It's been a long time coming. The builders have finally left and I can record, hopefully, good quality audio. And his main man, it's Chiefy Two Shoes. Bam, bam, bam! <laughs> Just in his house. Um, it's yeah. a Mario t-shirt, is that today? It is, yeah, and it's got like, yeah. the, 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 it's made up of images of all things, you know, like ghosts and stars and mushrooms and stuff, making up the image. Lovely. Very Never cool had you as a big Mario guy, but it's good to see. Okay. <laughs> and as I said at the top of this video, we are breaking down the 1991 Benelux catalogue. Images very, very gratefully received by our buddy in the Netherlands, Snowcat Ron. Uh, he's not only providing high quality scans to us, but also, let us breaking news, these images are going to find their way onto 3D Joes. Ron has been in contact Joe. with Carson Metaxas. And we are going to, uh, I suppose, make history and chronicle these awesome, awesome images and put them there for posterity forever. But hey, you heard it first on G.I. Joburg. Uh, first up, gentlemen, we have a little bit of unfinished business. Ah, uh, something from the last session of these vids, um, our three-part breakdown of the 1990 catalog. We have one image that we missed and a translation that we also missed. So if I can just direct you to Tiger Cat. Tiger Cat, yeah, got it. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. It is indeed. And, you, and we, love, like we love Roblox's uh, helmet. We love that helmet. Because you never know when you might need to crouch down and hide from a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a tiger like, better not be a male tiger. <laughs> now, quick question here. Who's driving that? Is it? Oh, it's dusty, isn't it? He needs to get that goddamn um, windscreen wiper. When you wiper say dusty, on. you mean no? It's I mean, dusty, it's a dusty. dusty. It's a dusty shield. Yeah. Um, now, did he come? Did that tiger cat come with a tiger tiger fied frostbite? Must have done. It, it does. did. Tiger force. And they even re they recolored his hair to like um, I think orange. Okay. Can I just say? Rough. I think they should have made it more realistic, and they should have had that wiper. They should have had a streak across it, like a clean patch. <laughs> and um, that would be, should mention that'd that. be really it, cool, though. But the toy does, Ben. Clearly, you didn't have a snow cat or a tiger cat in your collection, because no, no. Yeah, but they the, should have done it for this. I mean, okay, kept it clean, uh, clean. Mm. For as the if image. it was, is it? Yeah, for the image, if, as if it was going so dirty all around because uh, um, missed a trick. Hey, can there I just say, I don't like how they've got um, Psych out posed. He's not posed very well. There is he. He's going to fall off yeah. in a second now. Looks exactly. It, it's it's naff when vanilla. you're not actually holding on mm. to the vehicle. It's like it mm. betrays the, the suspension of disbelief if they are actually reliant on the foot pegs. Mm. But the translation reads as follows. Cobra's latest contrivance, blowing up the suspension bridge over which the express train needs to go. They're after the gold of the National Bank that is hidden in the safe car. But Psychart smells a rat. Immediately, Roadblock, heavy machine gunner, and tripwire explosive specialist rushed off to the Tiger Cat to defuse the bridge. Frostbite, the Tiger Cat driver, doesn't like detours. He drove straight through the large swamp, just a little more throttle, and the armored vehicle's on solid ground again. And now, with full speed to the bridge, which could explode at any moment. So, like, did Cobra rob the bank in Argentina, or...? <laughs> I know, right? Where is the swamp? And and Tripwire seems to be clearing the path of mines, which is something that isn't evident in the text. So, like, this is a situation where the accompanying copy kind of jibes with the image. I'd much rather this be like the Joes make a slow crawl through the dense jungle, you know, moving very, very deliberately and slowly, uh, checking out any booby traps, something to that oh. effect. Or there might not be mines. That just might be how he carries his mine detector. Nah, he's <laughs> mining. Yeah. He can tell. Yeah. He's no one carries it. Well. 
Yeah. Look at that lovely shadow on a roadblock there. It's wicked. Yeah, it's cool. The hey? Shadow, the pose, terrific. Even story. even the shadow on the um tiger cat's really cool. I like that um like sort of hit a like bloom on the on the tiger cat. That bloom lighting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, Would yeah, this be in danger of rocketing to the top spot, gentlemen, of our uh, in initial 1990 breakdown? It would be right up there because mm. this this particular setup was uh we really <clears throat> got pumped about, didn't we? Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, it's cool. At least this doesn't have Chief's weird tree issue that uh, one of the other images uh, was plagued by. This right. is all very yeah. kind of evident as to what is in the foreground yeah. and what is in the background. Uh, now, flicking over to the tiger fly image, just so that we've got it on record. Cheetah Force. Which one is it? <laughs> uh, Cheetah Force. I should have made that. <laughs> yeah. There we, go. there we go. There we go. Psych Out has a sixth sense, and besides that, state of the art electronic equipment. With it, he breaks the morale of every enemy, but he also knows how to receive maydays from G.I. Joe's in trouble. Duke, who went on patrol all by himself, is stuck in the quicksand. That Duke really isn't afraid of anything, always first in line wherever danger threatens. Psych Out has come to his aid with the tiger fly, while Bill, the pilot, has dropped a rope and gently pulls Duke out of the sandbar. The best pilot of the West dealt with this kind of situation before. Now, what I like about this text is it adds further information to what the hell Psychart's specialty deals with and what his equipment is meant to signify. So that I definitely would say is the merits to, to this bit of text. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I could just hear a scout behind me. <laughs> Indeed. Gentlemen, I think we have uh, done all our housekeeping. Shall we crack open 1991's catalogue? Yeah, let's do it. Yes, please do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the front right. page? <laughs> Boom. Okay, so this yeah. is almost like a different take on the first image from the previous catalogue, isn't it? Correct, Chief. Oh, uh, yeah. But that's cool. I mean, and the text will give us some additional information as to why there are three individualized cobras sort of set up right beneath Voltor. Paul, do you want to give it a stab, brother? Wow, dude. Uh, looking at this, like, okay, firstly, this is amazing. I love this. Like, what a great use of like a, a, a TV packaging card. No, I don't even know if that's <laughs> it. Maybe, maybe they're on trial. Maybe, maybe those. I think Steve meant read the text. I I can read it. <laughs> oh, you, you want to read the text? I've, Jeez, I've sorry, got man. the um, I've got the text up. If you want me to take a stab at it. All right, Ben, go for it, man. Okay. Go for my it, Drop the ball. I my appraisal. I apologize. Okay. Never before. Advantage out of timers. Oh, he cut me off, that mother. And ne you weren't going to do the title. Oh, is that the title in bold? Yeah. Okay. From his bunker, Voltar encourages his troops. Tomorrow, we will let the world tremble. Never before demonstrated in the Cobra base. Within barely 10 minutes, everyone was standing ready. The Targats with their trans-atmospheric biosystem. The Annihilators equipped with turbine helicopter packs. And Night Viper with his helmet that houses a directional sound detector. The Alley Vipers and Toxo Viper, Heat Viper, Frag Viper, and Norhide are also present at the roll call. Thanks to an iron discipline, Leader Voltar, the most poisonous of all Cobras, can count on his men at all times. Surrounded by his three loyal lieutenants, he makes his devilish plan clear to his terrifying troops to conquer the world. He wants there to be just one law in the world, that of the Cobras. There we oh, go. Yeah. They are giving Voltar the rub there, aren't they? Yeah. The most poisonous of all the Cobras. <laughs> Plays with birds. <laughs> I like the fact that they're picking him up, though, because, you know, his, his prior minorish roles, you know, we're now seeing him as, as some real big threat here. I like that. That's good. A lot of troops there, man. I mean, if you're a kid, you can only dream of troop building to those levels. I mean, I could only ring my mum and tell her to get me another toxo viper two three times yeah. um but that is <laughs> something yeah. else i mean wow so what's yeah. evident from the text is that at least in this reimagining frag viper night viper and heat viper are individuals they are voltar's mm -hmm. lieutenants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah 
which is interesting. Yeah. I, I I like that in that you know these guys do have very unique equipment, but I wonder why they settled on those three specifically. It's an interesting angle they've chosen here because normally, if you've got a big bad in the shot, they're kind of the one uh, more in focus, more more larger imaged, and you've got the mm. troops standing back behind them. You know, if you ever think of like the Emperor or Darth Vader, they're always in the foreground and you see the troops in the background. But here, they've almost done the reverse of that. And I'm not sure it works for me. I think mm. I would have liked to see Voltar bigger in the image. Yeah, I think what's interesting is that if you were going straight from the last catalogue to this image, I mean, this might not continue, but you would probably think, okay, similar levels of quality on display here um it, it, interesting to see if if it can continues but this does follow on very nicely doesn't it mm. um from the previous catalog from a quality point of view but perhaps less so from an artistic point of view i think i catch yeah. what you're saying there chief mm. like it's it's less um, art, it's less artfully done it's a very dead on squared off angle lighting mm -hmm. is doing things but nothing particularly as i say artistic and what is most evident is like i think even more so than anything in the previous catalog we're seeing elements that any child could find like these mm -hmm. are definitely like plas uh, uh, polystyrene or foam inserts for an appliance it's mm -hmm. so very evident that that's what this don't is. actually love the toxo vipers there um I'm not actually that keen. The kind of depth of field vibe going on there. I don't Maybe know. if they were a lot bigger in the in the frame. I like think if, if we were really getting a worm's eye view onto Voltar, but everyone yeah. is sort of similarly scaled in yeah. this picture. Mm. So thankfully, we do get the insert of Voltar. That's a nice close up. Yeah, really, really cool. Something. An angle, uh, pardon the pun, but it was intended. A different angle that I'd like to bring to the whole proceeding is that when I look at this, I try to see it, uh, I'm sort of seeing it like a, a like a shot in a film. So I sort of see it either starting at the top with Voltar and it's a, like a wide shot. And then you kind of, well, it's, it's a close in wide and then it's sort of opening up more and more and more, like, and revealing more of the army. Uh, more mm -hmm. of the guys standing there. And that's kind of how I see this. Like, I feel like I'm looking at Volta and then I'm leading out. And I would say, like, to speak to what Ben was saying now with the sort of foreground elements, I think it would be cooler if the Alley Viper, if that column of Alley Vipers and the targets were just, if there was just a few more, and then they could have made those targets a bit bigger as well, because then it would have created this a sense of there being a lot more here than they actually are. They just look and silly standing there as well. Like, yeah. why are they be in there? Like, we're just going to climb in up there. Maybe it would be more interesting if the um, it, if it was an over-the-shoulder shot from Voltar's point of view, um, oh, looking down at a be... sea of troops. Obviously, you're not going to... It would be That's a completely different image, but it might have been more powerful. Hi, Emma. <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> what are you up to? Sneaky. <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> 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 are you going for a walk? Are you recording? Yeah, we're recording. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> well, we got a lot of images to get through. Should we wrap this one well, up, Chief? Indeed. Oh. I do like the fact that Voltar's Vulture has rub on his face. <laughs> that's funny. Even a okay. dead mint sample. Have we um, clicked across? Because this, for me, is okay. Now, they've oh, had a meeting. They've, they've, got the, they've got everyone in. They're like, we loved what you did last year, lads. But um, <laughs> we uh, times. times are tight and budgets are tight. And we just need you to knock out some shots because uh, is there a <laughs> single figure here that you think is posed well? Even Shockwave looks funny down there. Yeah, let's um let's let's find out what it's all about. The G.I. Joe headquarters is in an uproar. Will they save the world from doom? Mutt, where are those explosives? Storm Shadow, don't forget your bow and arrow. Deep six, focus on the undersea phone cables. The tension is palpable in G.I. Joe headquarters. The G.I. Joes are on to the nefarious plans of the Cobras and are preparing to strike back. They are prepared to go to the extreme, on land, at sea, or in the air. The stakes are insanely high, but the G.I. Joes are equipped with a hefty dose of courage and cleverness. With that, they should be able to make it. Starker, Recall, Lowlight and Dodger, come on, we're going to explore the terrain! <laughs> yeah, hey, boy! I mean, look. 
<laughs> hey, once more with feeling, please. Jeez. <laughs> nice, I love the accent work. That's amazing. You just kind of switched from like your narrator voice to your American, like, yeah, come on, let's go. Excellent. Love but it. no, I do agree with Ben. It's quite static. And I think this was a carryover from the previous one we saw, which was top five material, where they're all in the same room, um, getting the brief in, leaning up against the wall, having a chit chat here. It's like, how many figures can we cram into one scene to make it look semi-believable that we can sell? And I guess you end up getting this. Yeah, the floors <laughs> are so, they're way too similar as well, each floor. Um, Zoom in. The, 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 the top side looks interesting. Um, you know, maybe you could have done a good shot up there. But, uh, you know, it's still better than your average uh, toy catalog shot, I guess. It's just what oh. we've been used to. It's a bit ropey. What's happening in the cross section is almost kind of lets down the side. Like it's not, it's not worthy of how cool the top like eighth of the mm. image is. I mean, you've got that amazing lens flare. You've got some smoke. You've definitely got like some Tupperware or something making up a Looks like uh, a satellite a dish, dish or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satellite yeah. dish. Can you but, imagine I mean, how cool made a plane from a would pan. look. Yeah amazing yeah. up there like, like some kind of like moonlight wire and like a, a someone sneaking through there that would be great There's but yeah shot. you look downstairs and all of a sudden like the accessories are kind of awkwardly stacked on the sides yes. have you noticed that yeah what is quite interesting is that they've taken vehicle ordinance and kind of stacked it on the right side but also mm -hmm. like not in a believable way and it looks <laughs> like on that middle layer right in the middle they've got some giant clock or number they got countdown. Casio. They got yeah. Casio. Yeah. Why is Shockwave walking with a cucumber up his ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You kill him, not, my boy. They're, they're, I know. And why is I, why is Spirit's bird well. inside? Yeah. They're not posed well. That they're, they're, they're those are posed in seconds. Like, okay, stand them up. Da, 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 da. Right, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Char Brawl is also charging off. And I think they've tried to make a conceivable like elevator, mm. but they, not really. Like, look, countdown's very... riding it, but mm. yeah, they they're looking to capture a hustle, bustle, busy scene, and and let's play, you know with a static shot. So hard to achieve that um, with all these figures. Obviously, they're meant to look like they're toing and throwing and and walking, but it it just looks like they're standing around rather strangely Budo's pointing at a map on the bottom section but the stem that the map is kind of on is like totally one of those um balloons <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like mounting a balloon on it a cup oh, yeah, the, the only positive thing i've i've got to say about this or the thing that i love about it is the lighting inside like and, and not for any particular reason other than it just evokes serious nostalgia for me it mm -hmm. really it feels like that light is from the 1980s like mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. that, that tungsten color that that just gets me that that takes me away but everything else yeah does pale in comparison to what's come before sadly my positive spin on this is as a child you could conceivably make this this is mm. your pit it's literally just some planks of wood um some plastic piping mm -hmm. to shore them up and like a gutted old vcr right in the middle with a yeah. digital clock like the numbers still there great right should we crack on let's do yes, it please. paul you can read this one it's nice and short cool i'm on the reading chops for this one okay hold on hold on hold on <clears throat> the cobras are sitting a new trap ambush in the ice once the cobras decided to take over the world they don't just think about the weather or the climate anymore whether it is the energetic opposition of the G.I. Joes or freezing cold, nothing stops them. See, at minus 20 degrees Celsius, in the middle of Alaska, a swarm of annihilators swoops down on Stalker. It looks like a small army of locusts. Stalker is stuck. Enormous blocks of ice are in his way. Luckily, Windchill is also there. He comes rushing in his Arctic Blast, which can handle any terrain with its giant tires. Will he be able to destroy the annihilators? With his coaxial double cannon and free stalker, find out next episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> Very nice. Did now anyone look, I, have I, the Arctic Blast? No. no. Oh, you did, Paul. I, 
I I coveted it when I was a child. I looked at it in CNA every day I went there. And CNA. I was like, I'm going to buy this. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. It was 50 rands. I was like, yes, mom, I want the Arctic Blast. I want the Arctic Blast. And then one day I went there to CNA. And it wasn't that it was gone. It's that they had something called the bug. And my focus ah. went from Arctic Blast to bug. So I never got this vehicle. It was something I always wanted. And my buddy, Michael Kerrigan, he had it. So I got a bit of experience with it. But as soon as I could get my hands on one, I got one. So I was about to tear this one a new one, but now I'm kind of loving it because I've just clocked that stunning depth in the pool, the pool. of water that Stalker mm. is in and seeing the, the way that sort of it goes down. That's fantastic. I think where it struggles is, is you see the bottom right where you've got that dude there. I think you need to have the same depth. It just doesn't look like he's high, a, a, a lot higher right. up. Yeah, he's, he's clearly quite a high meant, he, ledge there. He's clearly meant to be up on a yeah mountain yeah. top, or, you know, not it, super high above, but it almost looks like on the same plane. Yeah, it's 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 a relatively Billy basic, isn't it? But it's may I probably lose that vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think, Steve? Yeah, once again, you, you're kind of forcing yourself to market a toy in this image, which is something that almost they try to get away from in the previous um, set of images. The reason being like everything's kind of very uh, in frame uh, and very neatly photographed. It's mm -hmm, definitely, mm -hmm. you, you, you're getting a product shot here. It's a very inspired product shot. It's certainly not as basic as it could be. You know, we're not mm -hmm. just seeing a row of guys and vehicles sort of statically posed in a diorama, like, whoa, new for 1991. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but it helps It helps with the right-hand side of the image being, you know, close-ups of the characters and the vehicle and, and a, a more traditional angled mm -hmm. shot of the vehicle. So you can see, mm -hmm. ah, this is what we're getting. Here they are in a... In a, in a a diorama scene so i think those two pages do work well together agreed and yeah. and as you said ben that water is stunning that's uh that's what is that um toilet cleaner uh, <laughs> drano or something they pose, they pose the vehicle a little bit too close to the edge there haven't they probably <laughs> and where's he <laughs> doing it's a dead end looks like yeah, that's that's where my critique for this unless it's in, a that's... tunnel underneath this ice shelf I don't know yeah the vehicle's too yeah. big isn't it I just think that that um, should have been darker and then would have brought it closer to us and it would have given it a bit more depth to imply that, you know, that there's actually space for this vehicle to go. Because that's my, my knee joke when I saw this was like, okay, this is cool, but where's that Arctic Blast actually going? It looks stuck. So Yeah, it's, it's almost, it's a, it's a tight, tight shot, isn't it? Mm. Probably punch out a little bit. Hmm. It's difficult to see the logic of this scene. And to be honest, without the text translated, uh, I would not know, you know, obviously the Annihilators are attacking here, but I wouldn't know the backstory that like, that Stalker has reached a dead end and needs that block of ice moved, which seems hmm. like something that you only achieve with some serious explosives, to be honest. Also, yeah. not the best angle for the Arctic Blast. Like, don't get me True. wrong, the Arctic Blast is not the most flattering vehicle in G.I. Joe's sort of armory, but there are ways you could shoot this that make it look cooler than it is, and this is not it, in my opinion. I, I don't know enough about lenses, but if we are dialing our minds back to the early 90s and th the age of, you know, processing film and basically not knowing what you're shooting until <laughs> until you, you've got it um, developed, like you don't have the freedom to experiment with crazy racking of focus like mm. having an annihilator super super high up in you know in your face in the foreground and this kind of depth of field like you could do this far more dramatically if you had a more devil may care digital approach so given the limitations of the time i think this is a perfectly serviceable way of of selling you arctic vehicles and equipment with a unique spin yeah this yeah. top down bird's eye view it's yeah it's challenge I, challenge accepted stuff man i struggle with the vehicle i, I it does it look, looks like a bit of a bag of bones doesn't it there's not much there to, as a kid to, to, to get your 
hands on its a spin, a spindly white. bugger. Well, you're like the next Which, vehicle. To be fair, it is. But we're like we Way. Chief is setting it up. Red alert. The G.I. Joes are ready to respond to the smallest sign. Disaster! The Cobras are advancing from all sides at once. Battle stations, recoil commands. Behind the controls of the Thunderclap, Long Range activates his target-seeking infrared projector with skilled speed and readies his three cruise missiles with delayed ignition. Thunderclap is a vehicle with triple force, a 170 degrees rotating gun turret, a tracked vehicle equipped with three cruise missiles and a six-wheel trailer with machine gun. Backblast is in the cockpit of the radar rat at the controls of his three semi-active radar missiles. Wherever the vile Cobras may come from, the G.I. Joes are ready to strike back. Who on earth would like to be in the shoes of a Cobra in such a case? <laughs> Interesting Cute. shot, this. Aggressive palette going on there. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of the same um i i don't know if it works or not is it too orange i don't know it looks like they're on mars yeah but, <laughs> but i quite like it i quite like the different yeah. hues on the same color palette and you you could say look that sun that yellow in the background is way too bright but i kind of like it and Jeez. in the middle kind of focal point underneath the barrel they've kind of put this blur or dusty smoke effect there which That's i kind of like uh, yes. you like you though I'm, I'm like is it working is it not and every time I, I ask that question i think i do like it i think i do no i disagree i don't think it is working because they haven't matched all of the vehicles and troops they're not engaged with the lighting of that scene they almost look superimposed it doesn't look like a, co a cohesive photo to me um, is it because you're not seeing shadows then? yeah there's I, I don't know it's just especially that that thing on the the right i think yeah, they would like... have benefited here slightly from where they've got the two figures in the lower portion um in in their kind of toy poses i think it would have benefited from having you're going to have to lose some of the text but having this vehicle in a smaller image bottom right so you can see all the pieces of it almost joined up together in like a in its this... in its mm. And it's normal. That is the problem with these vehicles that have multiple modes is yeah. if you're only going with one shot, you're going to never really get an idea of its full capabilities. I remember yeah. my understanding of the G.I. Joe Raider was way out of whack for a long time because I've never seen it as one unit. I'd always seen it broken up into its two separate pieces. Mm -hmm. But uh, look, guys, for you, the sort of the, the surrogate headquarters of your G.I. Joe force was the thunderclap no the no, rolling, thunder. rolling thunder thank you um for me it was this vehicle so huge nice. nostalgia for the, the thunderclap a big um, ass gun it a big ass gun but also it seemed to have a kind of a, a field headquarters feel to it because you'd set it up in a static position and have these patrol vehicles kind of orbiting it um, it was very much the center of my G.I. Joe uh, base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's got yeah. multi, it's got, it can multitask, can't it? You've got, like you say, the base with Sounds the massive great. long range capability. But then these other vehicles, like the one, I don't know if they've got individual, I guess they are, they are called individual parts. I can see their label. But what's the one in the top, top left, number two? That looks like, a, you know, the little half track vehicle or the tracked vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that looks pretty capable. It's not, it's not a big vehicle by any means, but that looks like it can go into skirmishes and close up combat with some Cobras, you know, while you've got the base in another portion of your setup. So it feels like you could do a lot with this toy. Absolutely. That big, um, For a kid of the let, later eighties and early nineties, like I never had a Mauler or a Mobat. This was the core of my, my armored assault. And yes, these two vehicles from the Thunderclap were definitely frontline attack vehicles. Werbertide, they get destroyed because then how do you move your big gun? That was the big problem. But uh, yeah, man, I had hours and hours of fun using them as my my armored assault. And I can now see a little bit what you're saying, Ben, in that if I look at the rocks, particularly on the right-hand side of the image, it almost looks like they're a photo and then these, you know, and they've printed it out as a backdrop and then they've just plonked these vehicles in front well, of the photo almost. Yeah, because the sun is behind them. So... They've lit the front, 
as that's how the other side of these vehicles should be lit. But mm. they've they've obviously had to expose them so you can see them. Just looks all wrong. But that gun, that's like the big bastard gun the Germans built in like World War Two to fire over the channel. And just um yeah, it's a big thing, isn't it? It's cool. Yeah, we, I never shell. saw Imagine that. The shells. Oh, you can I never see the saw shells that in the UK. You, are those the shells down there? You can see the shells, and the shells yeah. have a kind of a breech loading mechanism. You drop them and, into that slot, and, and they don't fire. fire. They don't mm, fire. Okay. We got that a few years later. But what does happen is you kind of pull back on a, mm -hmm. a sliding tab, and it ejects the shell quite dramatically. So you can Ooh, kind of simulate. <laughs> yeah. Poor yeah, old. Yeah, exactly. um, poor old. Is that back blast? Bottom right. He's <laughs> drawn the shitty straw there, hasn't he? With that little vehicle with the big mouse ear. <laughs> oh, 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 unlucky. It's just radar duty. He's yeah. On comms. Great. Oh. Poor radar. Hey, look, uh, my my opinion is kind of swung around on the radar because it's it's a bit of world building in the GI Joe mythology. Like if you are setting up an impromptu uh, airstrip or if you are directing a, a massive artillery piece, like it would be useful to have a single independent radar unit that you can drive up onto a, a peak somewhere and just get radar coverage of the immediate area. So, you know, the radar rats, for all its faults, you know, at least on a basic toy level, someone without, you know, as much uh, pocket money to hand, you get to come away with a vehicle, but then on a kind of an adult reasoning, I'm like, yes, absolutely. It fulfills a, a, a very valid function. So, um, mm. I have that. to, I have to make a mention of this before we change over is Backblast's um, name, the Dutch name, on Uh I love that because uh, when I saw that, I kind of laughed, but I, like, I had to hold it in because Stephen was reading. Um, in Afrikaans, like, if you basically like somebody who's an on your head, basically it's just somebody who's looking to cause cuck all the time. <laughs> it's like a cock on your head. And it's like, I just saw that. And I was just like, that's great. That's a great name for backblast. He's backblast. looking for shit. It sounds like he's got gas. <laughs> My dad made that joke. Oh boy. He was merciless. He's like, Oh, what figure is that? Oh, backblast. <laughs> hey, dude, well, you're, you're a dad now. You can officially make dad jokes. So welcome to the club. Excellent. Right, should we move on? I'll read this one. Danger! Operation of destruction! Too late! At nightfall, a Toxo Viper commando under the command of Night Viper has penetrated G.I. Joe's hyper-accurate radar station. The computers and experimental programs are in great danger. Destroy everything is the order. But then you don't know the perseverance and the lightning-fast responsiveness of the G.I. Joe's. Shh! Keep it down. Low light hisses, who can see clearer in the dark than in daylight. I will grab the back three, shockwave whispers, recoil silent and decisive as always, and Mutt, with his specially anti-Cobra trained dog, are ready for battle. There we go. <laughs> Classic. Love Too it. Too late. Yeah. That reminds These me of Return of the Jedi. Oh, yes, yes. Too These Joes have made it in deep. Uh, yeah, what is it? Crazy House of Clowns. What's all the angles? What the heck? Well, I don't know what's going on here. What's with that right control? That have they pulled that over? It's weird. This shot. What's going on, <laughs> Chief? I explain. Um, <laughs> you got it, Chief. Take this one. <laughs> A lot of well, dishes in the background. Well, I was going to say they've reused those dishes from the from the <laughs> one where we saw. Uh, uh, number two, but yeah, I think this has fallen over. I think the right hand side of this <laughs> computer terminal <laughs> bank has actually fallen over in shot, and no one's bothered to just stand it up straight. They thought, ah, no one's going to notice. Let's just take it. What, you don't think it's a st stylistic choice? Or, <laughs> or like uh, S. Jub said, they didn't know. They took the photo, it fell over. They thought, ah, we got it before it fell over, and they didn't realize till <laughs> later the, on. I've got a problem with all the Toxo Vipers holding their blasters it's just annoying <laughs> yeah nice mm. use of um speakers what's the... that's what those dishes are they're mm. gutted okay. speakers mm. they're Cones, big old yeah. subwoofers yeah yeah what's what's in the center of the image uh it's a robot <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. god knows they took it yeah, out the, of the, the coolest thing about this image is that hatch that's rad 
Yeah, that's Hedge, great. Hedge is red. Another hatch. I also love the caution high voltage there on the side there. High which voltage. Is, which is what it, from wherever they pulled it from. I love that because it's like to scale, actually. <laughs> is it or is it not actually a sticker that existed on the appliance? No, that's what it is. It's a sticker that existed on the appliance. It just has the double feature of actually being mostly in scale to them. <laughs> you know, to me, that just, thing in the middle looks like a table and it's like they're having a tea party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Diabolical like tea party. <laughs> Something about the flooring design as well looks more like it's this for our scale and not these little guys. I don't know. Strange image, this one. Yeah, I like Something it. Something that bugs me about the hatch is the fact that the pattern on the flipped side is the same as the floor pattern. Oh, yeah. Like it should yeah. be a different texture. They've you know? just now he's taken it out. They've carpeted the <laughs> underside. Of, oh, no, you're right. He could have slid it, I guess, rather than it okay. flapping on a hinge. He could have but then put why it up and it slid it. Propped like that. Because mm. they needed it to look like uh, it had been opened and was visible. If it was just laying flat, <laughs> I think the image wouldn't have had the same we effect. We are the only people to talk about that hatch on planet Earth. I love that. <laughs> All right, okay, well, what about Recoil's boomerang bowler gun? Do you, are you guys familiar with this part of Blue Monstrosity? Oh, the gun Oh, is that the mm. one where it's, it's like top? It's over like, and it's under. Uh, over and under. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a strange one. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> nothing more to add. Look, it's the, the, the big win for me is Lowlight's pose. I love a little... <laughs> Yeah, and he's yeah. lit really cool as well, isn't he, yeah. for his outfit. Point man, he's ready to, uh, you know, give the signal. And it's kind of been transferred back, so low light signal, and you can see shockwave turn into signal as well to <laughs> Matt. Um, How yeah. stealthy is Junkyard at this point? Like, he's not breaking cover just yet, much as he'd want to. He's well, a very well-trained maybe, well maybe, maybe that's why the Toxos are all holding yeah, their weapons. Better. They know that the alarm's been triggered. They're just trying to act casual. Ah, it's an ambush. Po yeah. Reverse pose. ambush. Yeah. That Toxo in the top in front of the speaker going, he's he's absolutely the worst posed. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> but again, they did they carried on here the, the the from the Voltar one where he had his three lieutenants, because the mention in the mm -hmm. text was under the leadership of the Night Viper or something like that. He's he's yeah, now they yeah. carried on this this story, this canon um, from the one of the uh, earlier images, which is cool. <laughs> that top left Toxo Viper shame. He, he does not know how to hold his weapon. He's yeah. like, hmm. but do, you, do you just want to hit? Dangerous <laughs> do you just want to hit pause here and acknowledge that there is clearly a difference between these two catalogs? Would you agree? Agree, Chief? Oh yeah. You can't. Yeah, you can't. Thought deny that there has something has changed here well it's either it's personnel brilliant. that you know whoever was in charge of that shot is no longer there and then they just drafted in other people to do it who who didn't either have the same money or time frame maybe um, or skills but it's definitely look i'm not i don't want to be the guy who slags off every one of these images because there's no. there is a there is a lot to like in every single one of them um but having seen the first one yeah you can see the difference Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I think they, I think they've clamped down on the artistic license that they gave that first crew of guys. I think, personally, and, and they've been like, "Look, we got to get more toys in there, lads." Yeah, but again, I don't know if this one particularly is going to sell more of the toys in this shot. I don't oh, know I'm not saying it, it worked. I'm not saying no, it okay. worked at all. Right. <laughs> I'm um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hazard a guess that I think they probably went with the competition, like they were like, okay, we've seen what uh, these guys can provide. Let's uh, let's undercut them and let's use someone else. You know, and the the imitation artists responsible for this catalog were exactly that. They were trying their damnedest to imitate what had come before, but yeah just the care and attention to the detail that that we had in the previous year it's not evident here listen that computer terminal banks annoy me so i'm moving on to the next one chief you okay. may take away the gi joes will not abide by the cobra threat we defend the bridge until their bitter end 
Horrible! The Cobras are on a rampage, supported by two powerful war machines, have targeted the bridge that provides them with a clear path to the G.I. Joe base. If those devilfish Cobras pocket the bridge, we are done for! Shouts downtown. He is already in his armoured vehicle, the formidable Pulverizer, and aims his power cannon. This will come in handy because Heat Viper is ready and is devastated to bombard the G.I. Joe side with his double barrel machine gun. From the impressive bug, Secto Viper gives orders to the Cobra unit in the bug's detachable spherical submarine. The dangerous bug, with his two removable jet skis, feels at home on the swampiest terrains. The G.I. Joe's final hour is here! Heat Viper chuckles. Luckily, the G.I. Joes have developed their latest battle hardware, the Raider! Hot seat behind his double laser cannon already has the filthy Cobras targeted in his infrared gun sight, who will emerge victorious from the battle for the bridge. Whoa, you mm. got to love the lighting on this one. They, mm. Just as I said, it wasn't artistic. Boom! Um, that has to be the best lit I've ever seen the Toxo Vipers. That is exactly how you should be sort of building a scene for those guys because the lighting is matching their get up isn't it incredible mm. i'm not so a massive fan of the lighting here ah oh, chief classic it's chief. just too purple it's, just it's too, too pink purple what about that cool cave that's weird isn't it that's lovely light coming from there and also wait hang on what's the yellow under all of these oh is that the sand is yellow underneath that's weird that is cool. weird. Don't it's know. cool though. Uh, oh, wonder. you know what it is? They've got they've got two different lights, Real lights. like Fresnels, and mm. when you when you're casting shadow from the one light, you're picking up notes of the other. I don't know. Mm. It's possibly filling the shadows. It's like a full light. But love light. those two Toxo Vipers top left. Oh, on their way to do stuff. Yeah, I love seeing the bug in one of these catalogs. It just makes me happy. <laughs> now, what is that what is that thing in the water by the bridge that's where they that that is that part of the bug is it detached yeah okay. yeah that's, yeah, that's, little, that's, that's where he corner. said that, that in the text where it says spherical submarine that's that bit i guess mm. nice. i mean cobra are gonna absolutely tear gi joe a new one here aren't they mm. the pulverizer's got a big gun yeah, the, and the Raiders, not a, a slouch oh, sorry. either. No, wait a minute. The, sorry, the ra oh, the, sorry, the, the Raiders, the one in the middle, isn't it, with the raised up missiles? Mm. Okay, sorry, the Raider is what I meant. Yeah, look, it's going to be an absolute bloodbath either way you cut it. This is <laughs> way too close. Way too close. <laughs> I think the only guy that gets away is the Alley Viper because he's like, uh huh, and he he shuts that down. hatch. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, what is he on? Some sort of flying skidoo thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's he's good. I also dig the shots color and the lighting. I love how synthwave it is. Uh, yeah, makes the devastator. Yes. In, right, right. It's cool. It makes the devastator and the pulverizer look good in my eyes, at least. Mm, um, I can definitely hit. makes. Uh, it's like it's it's actually kind of sad, but the devastator on other catalogs looks very chintzy, but here it actually looks like quite a full body little vehicle. It's way more appealing um, here than I've seen it on on other catalogs, at least to it's me. Yeah, I, just I, I would say it's hard to shoot the bug and make it look, um, sort of incorporate it into a scene and make it look like it's meant to be there. I think they've done a pretty good job with that toy. Mm -hmm. Although, like, you know, everybody has a good side, and I feel like that's not the good side of the bug. I think the oh, other really? side is a more attractive, yeah, way more attractive. M more it's got those hatches, or... and, and yeah, I just find it more visually interesting. And also, like, having the sub out is great because it speaks of the functionality. Mm -hmm. But I don't like that it creates that empty spot there. And that that same applies to the Raider. The Raider is actually a very cool looking vehicle when it's complete. But when it's like that, it looks chintzy as all hell. So is, and, that, is uh, that, that that tracked thing at the top of the picture, is that the front of the Raider that's detached? Yes, yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I actually mentioned earlier that it's like I'd only ever seen the Raider in yeah. this format. Right. But mm. if you see it all together... It really just needed its own insert. We might get that a little later. Okay. But I will say one thing about um, Heat Viper. The direct translation of Fear Adder is yeah. Fire Adder. Fear so adder. it kind of jibes with, with the way Heat Viper was kind of almost misrepresented. Like he's not a flamethrower. He's a high explosive anti-tank Viper. 
but in a lot of media they make that bazooka out to be well, that missile launcher flamethrower. out to be a flamethrower yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so fire adder kind of so much better than bottom adder <laughs> sorry warm warm snake um, and speaking of the raider being intact in the very next spread i'm reading this one <laughs> you take it away sir it had me at Grivel. <laughs> horror the cobras are preparing to ruin an undersea explosive tests nothing to report muskrat okay lightfoot give the dynamite to deep six we don't have a second to lose. Spearhead, with his loyal Lynx Max by his side, gives a final order for an unprecedented underwater test with explosives. Deep Six, the guy who works below sea level, takes a dive to adjust the explosives three meters underwater. But what the G.I. Joes don't know yet is that they are being carefully watched. Heat Viper and Frag Viper, Cobra specialists in pyrotechnics and everything related have concealed themselves and are hatching a relentless offensive. If Muskrat doesn't see them coming, the G.I. Joes may pay dearly for it. Sorry. The rain, so, like... boys. The rain. Yeah, the drop, the beads and the droplets. It's got How some atmosphere, this one. Yeah, Deep Six I'm... and Lightfoot are going to be mullered here because when Heat Viper fires that, that high explosive round at short range... Um... <laughs> That's Yeah, that is spag bowl yeah so <laughs> and they've so got this explosives is this... this is bad news yeah. for everyone three, well, unless he's already planted the explosives i think three meters down they said so oh, unless he's, what are he's planted crates, it, he's coming man. back up what are in the know. crates then so it looks it looks like they've repurposed a, a sticker from a maggot on the one uh the one that says five that's a maggot sticker and then there's a, a warthog beware of blast sticker on the other uh, anyways lovely details but yes absolutely it's going to be once again blood bar yeah how have they what done the we... rain there in 1991 practically must be but hey it, it does show you that actually the way we think of raindrops is incorrect like the the, the m m there's more volume at the top of a raindrop than the bottom yeah the body of water probably needed some it looks like it's raining pretty heavy. It should have some splashes, shouldn't it? Like, um, mm. uh, true. What's that top left vehicle? It's the, the Raider. 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 Yeah, that looks fantastic driving through there, coming out right. there. Very imposing. Amazing. Just the, just the color of it, how it matches the scene. The rain does look a bit sort of flat, like it's on the, the, the foreground, the front of the image. Um, but it's, it's cool. I was going to say, if you didn't buy a Raider from the previous page, this is the page that sells the radar, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I look could... at that, and that that reaction you had is exactly it. That's like, yeah. what is that vehicle? Because it's completely different. I, I, just, I different love the way the model. guns are slightly offset from each other as well. Yeah. The, the figs yeah. could be a little grubbed up, maybe that might look yeah. cool. Mm. I think I think this is a tricky one because, you know, they've done well to incorporate a lot of story and stuff going on in this image i was thinking is it a bit too cramped maybe but i'm willing to kind of forgive that because you know i, I like the setup here i think it's telling enough of a story whereas the um second image we saw with the three floors where there was just tons and tons of joes there was no story to that at all whereas at least here you know even if you can say maybe it's a bit overcrowded but i like the story that's being told here so that's cool yeah can we have a moment for the foliage this yes. is a very, very well-dressed set. It's yeah. it's so populated with different textures. And now, it looks damp it, and wet, doesn't it? It looks yeah. so it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if this was a reuse of some of that foliage from the first catalogue, maybe, mm. that they yeah. still had on hand. Um, the so. ladder, I mean, the sort of the, the walkway looks a little <clears> bit <throat> uh, too clean. Pla looks a bit plasticky, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it it's looks like dolls that you get at a craft store. Like, it doesn't look like a piece of jungle. I think the color's wrong. It's too light. Wood that's been there for, for years and years. Mm. Okay. Mm. Good shot, though. There's one more thing about the shot that I really do like as well. Um, I Deep like six going three meters down. <laughs> going three meters down. <laughs> Slightly um, misused. I just dig the, I love the angle. I like that like sort of semi low angle. Uh, I I feel like to me this has been probably the most exciting shot that I've seen so far. Um sorry for spoilers, but yeah, I'm really digging this. I can really get into there. 
And I love that little bridge. It's great. And also, Stephen, with a bit of Afrikaans in your brain as well, check out Deep Six's name. Kick force. <laughs> Kick for a force. Yeah. I like <clears throat> Kick means nothing. Uh, to uh, at least it means nothing in Afrikaans that I know of. But it's just it just sounds very funny. It almost sounds like he's yeah. It's kind. It's kind of a rude. It, it sounds kind of rude to me in a funny way. Kick force. I don't mean it Taking... like as a slight on the language. It's just like in Afrikaans, it comes across as like. For me, it just reads as like kinky sausage, <laughs> even though it's spelled <laughs> yeah. differently. But yeah. Uh, force. Yeah. Anyway. Really anyway. Really <laughs> hey. Okay. The Cobra Base. Confidential. Our special mission discovers an ultra secret Ooh. Cobra Base. During an extraordinary reconnaissance mission, scoop and rock and roll with 30 kilograms of video equipment and a hefty dose of agility invaded a secret Cobra base. You'd be amazed how much there is to see. Right in front of them is an overwhelming Cobra artillery setup. Cobra Razorbacks with their armor plates, steel armament, and 360 degrees rotating bulletproof gun turret. A bunch of Cobra Hiss tanks with their ultra laser machine gun. All this is being closely guarded by the Annihilators, a sort of hybrid man and helicopter who go off on anything that moves. Image and sound specialist Scoop shoots razor-sharp photos on which every centimeter of the secret base is being mercilessly recorded. Headquarters will be pleased. Latest news! We just learned that the Razorback also has missile firing capability. I was informed by Snowcat Ron that the last bit of that blurb actually refers to the European Razorback coming with a spring-loaded missile launcher, which wasn't part of the standard release, but it being 1991, Europe was trying to incorporate the spring-loaded features that were then quite commonplace in the American releases. I like everything about this except Rock and Roll and, and Scoop. They just do not Aww. need to be there. Well, I love that. Uh, the best thing for me is the um, that, alley vipers running out of that tunnel. That's how you make a figure. You pose it. I mean, they look like they're running. Mm -hmm. They look fantastic. Um, I love that. Fang. Thing, is that, that fang? Is actually, that a fang two in the middle? That is a fang two. I, yeah. I like the angle of it. I like the fact that it's out of focus. Um, looks like it's flying. Um, I love, even though you can tell that, you know, these. The, the, the anti-tank um, devices and these little sort of tunnels in the background, you can tell that they've been, you know, built maybe by a seven-year-old. I still like them. They look cool. Um, I love the deep background. Yeah, the, 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 the alley bike was running. Like I like all of it, but just accept those two Joes. No, I don't like the annihilators. They look like they've, they're being hung. <laughs> they look like they've been <laughs> yeah. hung, but you, but yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't need... see the... Um... <laughs> Yeah, they just a simple bend of the knee a little bit, I think, would that would one give in the middle, he's more dead. Natural. <laughs> yeah. His neck's broken. He's slumped over, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's flying into battle like mm. I like rock and roll and scoop in that foreground sort of uh yeah, lit very cliff nice. nice. I yeah. dig that because it reminds me of the Taxan video game, uh when you get into that mountain level and it does this sort of like parallax scrolling thing with your character. But it reminds me of that, and it sort of sets the stage for me that this whole thing is very video game-like, which I really mm -hmm. love. Also, love all the colors. I feel like this pulls off that sunset vibe a lot better than the previous one that we looked at that also was very red with the thunderclap. Um, I have got one weird issue, and you, when you guys pointed out the Annihilators, it brings us up more. That, uh, that Fang 2 is out of scale. In fact, that whole backdrop, I think, is a 2D, is actually a print. Um, it's, like, flat. It's an actual backdrop. And I think it was shot at a different scale. Like, if you look at the size of that Fang 2 in relation to the stuff in the foreground, and you look at the size of the guy's head in there versus the stuff in the foreground, he should be closer to us in the plane, but he's not. And also, parts of him are behind that uh, radar dish. Like, that one missile is behind the radar dish. So, there is... There's a whole bunch of special effects stuff going on there with that thing too. You're right, and, Paul. Yes, the, the 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 dish should be behind that red yes. missile. And also, Weird. I think, and I think those annihilators aren't hanging on anything. I think they were actually shot like that on a on a solid on a flat surface, and then actually cut out and and inserted in the in the final for this because they did do that. So. Huh. 
Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I tell you what I do like. I, uh, that target who's kind of waving in the um the, the razorback. Uh, the razorback, yeah, yeah. Or kind of mm. saying, Well, we'll stop, stop, you've come far enough. I like I like that little touch. Look, Paul, until you pointed out that the Emperor was not wearing any clothes. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, look, it's I have no problem with um with a, a bit of trickery. Uh, I love the deep background. This is a major, major right. cover installation. So I love cool. the feeling. I'm just being technical. It's a big base. Yeah, a lot going on, and like it's just chaos. <sighs> Everybody yeah. at it. Can the His 2's back gate extend all the way to the ground like that, or do they kind of no snap snap it off and then re rejoin it? It's like yeah. the major irritation of that figure of that vehicle is that it doesn't do that all the way. Well, these guys thought to do that. The toy stylist, as I like to think of him or her, thought, this is garbage. Let's actually have the gate come all the way down so we can have this kinetic movement up the ramp for the alley vipers. Yeah, that's my favorite element. Shall we move on, gents? Yes. Move on. <sighs> Shall I take this Outer one? space. Please, Ben. Oh, I'd love it, Ben. Ooh. Okay. Alert in the stratosphere, a swarm of Targats is descending on the Crusader. There is definitely a problem in the stratosphere. The Crusader, G.I. Joe space shuttle, is being bombarded by a small army of human meteors. The Targats are a formidable Cobra combat unit. They possess the speed of a missile, a special trans-atmospheric suit, and a ceramic heat shield. But Countdown can't be kept down long. He is an astronaut at NASA, and feels better at home in space than on Earth. If things get out of control, he will just jump into his one-seater reconnaissance jet with anti-radar reflection, attack the targets in the back, and eliminate them with his 20 millimeter cannon. What? What's with the fairy dust? Is that? That's not meant to be the star field, is it? What's, mm -hmm. Chief, come on. Um, I see yeah, your is, eyes. You're looking. It, you're looking confused. It is going to be the star field. Of course it is. But I mean, I don't know what kind of galaxy he's in there because that is a lot of stars in the sky, very closely grouped together. And what the globe, globe and the earth. The, the earth seems to have writing on it. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask. Like, guys. is it in English for me and like another language for other people who look at the Earth from space? Because. <laughs> But it's it's in a kid's bedroom vibe. Have they crossed? Have they they gone through the looking glass on this one? It's interesting. It's, I feel well, like a lot again, of this it, catalog does. It's mm. what Steve was saying earlier. You know, we had those the 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 night sky shots from the previous one with the what was it with the night raven we had, and then the um, uh, X nineteen X nineteen mm. sorry, and that shows you how you do a, a black sky um, aerial shot, and here. They've like right. It's a, it's a, in space, so we're going to need stars. We need to we need to reinforce this in space. So let's put a globe in the corner. Um, and yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. not morons. They obviously know what that looks like, Chief. I mean, they know that that's going to give it a certain look. I, oh, you say? I, I can no. only say that yeah, maybe the brief really was to. Okay, guys, you've impressed us in the last catalog. Let's let's scale it back and let's make it a more achievable look for a child, an aspiring child. Reminds me of Moonraker. Yeah, but they haven't oh. even used the best angle of the vehicle. Um, there's too much. You know, you want that bigger with less of those targets in the in the frame, don't you? Mm. Know. But then then you're going to run into that globe, <laughs> which is clearly in the foreground. <laughs> Come on. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I love it's... the concept of the shot. I just think the execution is poor. Sorry to be the technical guy. And also those but stars absolutely. are brighter than it's, everything it's else. It's Moonraker. Yeah, it's like also like Ben Drax. like immediately keyed in on those stars. And it was like, and it's because they are so bright. They actually dominate. They overwhelm the lighting of everything else. So you're also, you're drawn to them. And it's actually at, uh, to the detriment of the figures as well. Like they don't get the, the, the love they deserve. My favorite part of this is the little, um, basically it's the Night Raven craft, but it's the little, the little spaceship, tiny little one. The with Avenger. Like a little bit of, yeah, there we go. That's what it's called. Thank you, Stephen. Mm. Um, oh. I love that blue lighting on it. I love that. If you like, if you put your hand over, over most of the shot and you just focus on that, that just looks so cool. I like that. 
But otherwise, no. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I love how Countdown has just, he's just leapt into the void. I mean, it's, it's evident that the targets are kind of under some kind of powered flight. But uh, in Countdown's case, he's really just pushed off. I love the shot of mm. Countdown on the right-hand side of the catalog, like the one without the background. I like that pose. I think he looks pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. Really like that. Yeah. 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 Gonna go and blow up an oh, asteroid. Yeah. Like a base movie. <laughs> Dig it. Um, like, the targets... Can we just talk briefly about their function? Because, strictly speaking, they're not astronauts. This isn't Destro's space trooper. These guys are infantrymen. They're meant to fight on the ground. They're just mm -hmm. deployed in the upper atmosphere and then drop onto their target so like this is massaging them into a different role and it's yeah. probably one that most kids <laughs> did uh yes. did you have this figure as a child guys target yeah yeah i've got him okay, now I'm right here <laughs> oh, geez all right geez, well, that, that was good wasn't it? right on cue so were they effectively space troopers for you or did you use them on in sort of ground no. incursions i don't space. think we ever we never did i never did space play no, I got five of these suckers. I was troop building. What? Yeah, man. Nice. I had a complete. Hard, I had a hard on for anything Destro. Oof. Don't tell yeah. Destro. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I, I kind of prefer to play with these guys in a kind of like um, you know, jet the jump troopers. Yeah, like the jetpack um, troopers from Battlefront, Chief. Where. This isn't necessarily sustainable for a long, like actual flying like this. It's more it's like, like a, a short a... jump. Yeah. yeah, and you've got Sweet. these wings to give you some stability, um, like assault troopers in and out. Yeah, yeah. I had countdown. My buddy Rob had target, and I must admit, we just used them as jetpack troopers. They were just swooping around the battlefields. Yeah, flying around and sniping. Yeah, fodder. Loved the detail on the backpack of the target that clearly indicates like ammo. Um, take it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. careful to take this sucker off. I've got Ooh. a habit of um, breaking them on the, the show, no less. Yes, lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that could, they, they could have gotten away of having nothing on there. I know. Very it great. Says ammo. To detail. Ammo, exactly. And it, it clearly has sort of a bullet belt running to a, a barrel. Love it. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be a real uh douche yeah douche uh i've got right. missed calls from my solicitor and my estate agent and my buyer so well in that um, case we'll have to come to back those. for ben Hulux 1991 part two so um <laughs> apologies that's fine guys be good thank news. you once again for joining news. me well. um yeah you know it, that big sale might have come through um if anyone's in the dark chief is trying to sell his house yeah <laughs> but uh, I guess we've been talking G.I. Joburg and we're out of time because we're the out of time is something like that we're coming back I think there's about six more to discuss we did nine there I think we've got six more so um, so we will be back indeed thanks for joining us once again it. guys this has been a G.I. Joburg talking Joe out of time is special and uh, catch you in a few yo Joe Cheetah Force Later.